I was at home with my husband and I've got twin boys, Richard and Edward, and they came in with a video and had dinner with us. Anyway, we had a nice dinner and we put the video on and then I remembered I'd got a box of Tim Tams in the fridge. Well, that's when the trouble started. Can I tell you about the trouble? Yes. Well, you know what twins are like, don't you? They've got to share everything exactly. So they're big boys now, but even when they were little, they insisted everything in our house was shared properly. Everyone had to have exactly the same amount. Well, do you know how many Tim Tams are in a packet? Shall I tell you? Eleven. Eleven's a terrible number when there's four people. So what happened was the twins began to argue. He's got more than me. You've got more than him. And then they started to break up the Tim Tams. And this is when it got really bad. They got chocolate on the new white sofa. I know. And my husband was cranky. Anyway, I cleaned it up so it was all right. But this is what I'm thinking. Next week when they come with the video, the DVD, and we're having dinner, <coughs> and I get the Tim Tams out, I'd like to get them all cut up and on plates so there won't be any mess on the sofa. So this is what I thought. I thought maybe you could tell me how to cut up the Tim Tams. Do you think you'd be able to do that? Yeah. Okay, well, I'll just put up here where we're up to so we all know what's going on. I'll just move this. Whoops. <coughs> now, how many Tim Tams did I say we were in a packet? Eleven. 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 I better remember my capital letters for Tim Tams. Eleven Tim Tams in a packet. Who do you think that is? I'm the mum. That's mum. Who do you think that is? Oh, yeah. actually, look. He wasn't happy. What was he? So that was Dad. That was Eddie. He was cranky because he wanted fair shares. And that was Rich. So there's the problem. 11 Tim Tams, four people. How do you share those Tim Tams so everybody gets exactly the same? Don't tell me now. Because I've got some paper for you. I've got some pens for you. And I thought you might go away and you might put it on the page. Who thinks they might be drawing pictures? You think you're going to draw Tim Tams and things? Nice work. Who thinks they might use numbers? Wow, nice work. Who thinks they might use a mixture of pictures and numbers? Wow, I can't wait to see. Who thinks they might use some tallies or something? Anybody think that might be? Okay, we'll find out. Anybody got any other ideas? What's your idea, sweet? You got a different idea? Are you going to tell me or leave it as a surprise? Leave it in the fire. What I quite like about problematised situations is once I've sent the students off to do their job, I'm redundant for a few minutes. I won't tell them what to do. It's not my job to rescue them. I give them enough think time, enough confidence, enough expectation that they can do it by themselves. Um, as soon as possible I'll move in and find out what a student is thinking, what their plan of attack is, and I might ask some questions, I suppose prompting questions. Why are you doing that? Would something else help? Um, will that get you where you need to be? But I'm not going to tell them, I'm not going to show them um, how to do it. I want to see their thinking on the page. That's the main thing. What are you doing you sweet? What are you thinking? Enjoy your family. Yeah. So is that what this is here? Yeah. And why did you choose to count in twos for my family, Serafina? So um, I can share the things. Okay. Um. So, are you going to give me two? Can you show me that you've given me those two? How would you do that? Yeah. 
Nice work. So let's cross that one off. We've done that one. And then the next two, you're giving them to who? Yeah. To my husband? Yes. Okay, do you want to do that? Now we've used that one, so better cross that one off. Oh, you're giving him four, are you? How much is that so far? Six. Six. So, what are you going to give Edith? Six. And what's double six, do you know? Um, really what I do, I move in as soon as one child's got enough on the page for me to have a conversation with that child, I'll move in and you'll see I'll ask them to tell me what they've done, why they've done it. I might ask, is there another way you could have done that? Is there another way you could have counted that? How did you work that out? Can you prove it to me? What I'm actually doing is an intensive interview to find out exactly what the child's bringing to the task and then I'll start to prompt. Um, I'll try and push to see if they can go a little bit further. I'm watching the child's face, I'm watching the work sample, I'm listening very carefully. I stop at a, the moment that I see a child's face change, I know I've done enough. Um, and then I ask permission to write the story of what they've told me on their work sample. It's really important to know I don't write on a page if I'm told I can't. I ask permission. If the child says no, then I write on a post-it. Um, what I write down, the annotations, is the documentary evidence. I now have documentary evidence, what that child did without assistance, what that child did with a prompt, and if I actually had to scaffold, what that child did as a result of a scaffold. So I've now got the documentary diagnostic information that I need. How will you count them up? If you cut them into halves, what kind of counting will you do? Two. Show me how that works. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. 16, I mean 14, 16, 18, 20. Oh, okay. So, how many biscuits have you got there at the moment? How many Tim Tams have you got there? Um, 11 there. All of them are 11, and I've got two in each one. And if you've cut them into halves, so you've got half in each one, how many halves have you made? Two. Two in each one, but how many halves is that all together? I think something went wrong last time you were counting. So you've got two halves. Four. Four halves. Six. Six halves. Eight halves. Um, ten halves. Um, twelve halves. Fourteen. Sixteen. Eighteen. Twenty. Twenty-two. Got twenty-two halves there. They're not whole biscuits, are they? Okay, so before you go too much further, how many have you given to Mum so far? One, and I'm about to give that one to her. What, one whole biscuit or one half biscuit? One half. Okay, we've got to remember about these halves and things, haven't we? And I gave the other half to um, your husband. When the students have had time to grapple and work on the challenge, um, I'll try and find two or three work samples. I might use a, I might use a sample with an error in it. I'll definitely use a sample from a less able student as well as a more sophisticated one. And when the students come to the carpet, what we try and do is involve the students in explaining what their thinking was, how their strategy worked. I might ask the rest of the class to get involved, to summarise what's said, ask questions. Um, so that learning, again, coming on the carpet, a community of learners, learning from each other, expecting to learn from each other, expecting to share ideas. Um, but also that's a time when the teacher can do a little bit of input. So that's the time where we might compare methods. How is this one mathematically similar to that one? It's also the time where the teacher might say, well, there was another way of thinking about this. Um, do you notice how much it would have helped if we'd grouped those in fives or, or whatever it is? Um, so basically the lesson isn't complete until the maths has been deconstructed by the students, till um, their work has been shared and the peer learning has taken place. Happiness. Could you come and explain this one now? I want you to pay special attention to what happiness is telling. I cut two into a half so, ev so that everybody could have um, a half and then, and then I decrease once into um, quarters and instead of um, writing half I did it the next way. You um, do a one, then a line, then a two. Nice work.
Thank you very much. I'm going to give you this happiness. Don't go away. I like everybody's eyes up here. Happiness, could you point to the whole Tim Tams and ones that you didn't cut that everybody got? Um, these ones. Those ones. Two whole ones each. Can you show us where the halves are? Um, so they each got a half each. And then you had to cut again. You said you cut into quarters. Where are the quarters? These ones. Okay. And how many quarters are there? there? Um, uh. I haven't got any more. <laughs> I haven't got any more, have I? We've used them all. Okay, thank you, sweet. If we want the students to have a positive disposition to maths, um, we've got to make sure everybody has success. You'll notice that I used work samples that weren't of a particularly high level. I even used work samples with mistakes in them. Um, now, I can, I can work with those. I can get the whole class to work with those examples. I can make even the less able child feel successful. If a child's drawn, for instance, the 24 lollies, and that was as far as they got with the problem, um, I can use those 24 lollies and use that child's work sample as a tool to get the rest of the class thinking. The child who didn't complete the problem doesn't have to feel um, any less successful. In fact, they feel highly successful because their work sample has been valued. Um, now, the other thing you'll notice that I do is I don't focus on the answer. I often leave the room and we haven't got to the answer. But what we have got to is unpacking and finding strategies and smart ways of dealing with parts within the problem. And that's my goal. I can come back tomorrow with a strategy lesson and pick up some of those pieces. Today, the focus is on the thinking. What, like this, to show a half? Is that what you mean? Yeah, okay. What else did you like about the one that Happiness did? I also did them two. Okay, you did those two. Um, yes? You liked how she, how she had to cut them into halves and quarters.